Hello, this is Dread from Last Epic Builds. In today's video topic, we're going to be talking about a revamp of a prior build, Stormquakes and Eyes, Bone Golem Necromancer, Solo Bone Golem, Retaliation Bone Golem, whatever you want to call it. It's a very strong minion build, and it has been a very strong minion build for the past few months, but it hasn't really been represented much because I made one video back in the day before protections were changed, and they were instantly changed right after, and I didn't have time to update the build but now i actually have time to update the build and show people the build and how strong it is now now i am a little sick so i'm sorry if my voice sounds a little weird but other than that i'm doing fine but uh so bone golem retaliation how does this work well bone golem itself has a node inside of it that gives it a retaliation bone nova when it is hit so it has a base 15 percent chance but then you can bring in that all the way up to like 45% chance. But then that's whenever it's hit by anything. So I could hit it, enemies could hit it, 45% chance. But then there's a node that triples that for ally hits. So for instance, if I were to hit it, it has a 125% chance to retaliate. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong here, but I believe what that means is that uh, the retaliate will have a 100% chance of applying, right? It'll... It'll shoot out one bone nova when I hit it, and then I'll have a 20% chance to shoot out another one. I believe that's how that works. I'm unsure, though, so don't don't quote me if I'm wrong here. I believe that's how that works. At the very least, at 100% chance. So whenever I hit the golem, he uh, makes a bone nova, right? That's, that's what's important, right? And then I apply bone curse to him. So bone curse has a node in its tree that allows you to apply bone curse to your minions. Why is that important? Well, bone curse is a hit and it counts as your hit. So whenever you hit something with bone curse, it procs another hit and does damage. Well, since you're casting it on your minion, what happens is an enemy walks up to your bone golem and hits it, right? It will trigger bone curse and it will auto proc bone nova because uh it has 125 percent chance to go off on an ally hit and since bone curse is an ally hit right what we're doing is we're converting enemy hits to ally hits right is 125 percent chance to retaliate and that's very strong because you can have like an archer pack hit him like 20 times and he shoots out like 20 bone novas doing absolutely disgusting amounts of dps and then of course we utilize a lot of other uh, scaling abilities we use dread shade with the auto the auto crit and all of the more damage in its tree we utilize the more damage inside bone curses tree it gives you like 150 percent more minion physical damage for uh bone golem which uh, the bone nova is a physical spell by the way then you utilize uh, all the more damage inside bone golem tree itself which is a lot of more damage and you end up doing absolute disgusting amounts of single target damage your bone uh, your bone golem turns into a freaking nuke you just throw it on enemies and it just destroys the entire screen and what we also do as well is normally this wouldn't be that good of a build because we'd be facing a boss and the boss don't doesn't hit the enemy much it doesn't hit you much right well we can actually proc our own bone nova by running rip blood and casting it on our own minion with the node in the tree that allows you to cast it on your allies so what this does is it always gives us i think two procs of bone nova every single time i hit my bone golem because it counts the bone curse one hit so that's a hundred percent chance so that's one bone nova and then it counts the rip blood hit which is another so whenever i hit my bone golem i always cast two bone novas and in the tree the bone novas always pierce and they always uh they always have a big range right so it's a bunch of aoe so this is definitely one of the better minion builds i believe this is a contender for the best minion build now it could use some tweaks but it, it definitely could be the best minion build by far in terms of damage, in terms of survivability, in terms of arena viability, in terms of monolith farming, in terms of bossing, because you do so much disgusting amounts of damage and you can make yourself so tanky thanks to some of the new mods. It's absolutely insane. So this was made back in the day when protections was a thing. But now that we have so many changes and resistances, right, gearing has become so simple that I can stack health to the moon and abuse aura of decays 12 percent health 
uh, health uh, regen or 12% healing effectiveness. Like, So the way AOD works, it takes 12% of your missing health and it heals it per second. Now, it is affected by healing effectiveness. So right now I'm at 600% healing effectiveness, but at 800 healing effectiveness, I will heal 96% of my missing HP per second, meaning that if I am missing like 100 HP, it will heal 96 back. Pretty much what that means is I am utterly almost immortal. So if you get perfect rolls on your idols, on your gear, and get up to as close as you can to 800%, which is like the magic number, you will pretty much get to the point where as long as you don't get one shot, you probably won't die. Obviously, things can hit you within the time that AOD heals you, but if as long as you're playing smart, that'll never happen most of the time, right? Unless you're dumb like me. But So you can make yourself tanky while also making the Bone Golem do a bunch of damage. Now, if you're from Path of Exile, you know from Herald of Agony Guardian that this combo is a very disgusting combo overall. If you did not know, this feels a lot like a Herald of Agony Guardian. So if you like that build, you'll definitely love this build. Now, another thing, another hurdle that I found that I dealt with is... If you run enough movement speed with the Bone Golem, he will actually get a lot more aggressive than normal. I don't know if it's a bug with the AI. I don't know how it works. But it seems like as though is if you get more movement speed, the range at which he's aggressive from your body is larger. Meaning that he will go off screen and start attacking things, which is strong for you because you want him to go and get in melee range with the enemy so that they hit him and the procs, the all the bone novas and all the enemies dies, right? So this is like a reflect retaliate build. Like this is like Reflectomancer's baby brother, but like Reflectomancer's dead. But still, this is like this is like a different version of it. Now, with that being said, let's get into the skills, shall we? Here we are in game with our character, Abusive Relationships. So for the latter so far, uh, we got to 250 earlier with a little bit of effort, like a little bit of effort. Uh, my gear's pretty bad. I could get a few more levels. I could easily break 300. Like we could easily beat the rank one necromancer right now. But sadly, my throat is a little bit sore right now and I'm a little sick. So we're going to be ending this short. So for skills, the first skill that we need to run is bone golem so we take five points into amalgam of mages which is a hundred percent more spell damage absolutely amazing for you and also increases the stun chance so you're stunning things as well because you're hitting a lot of times so you end up stun locking a lot of enemies then five points into bone hail for the extra bone nova chance like i was talking about in the, in the intro and then a bunch of more damage then because it's a it's a spell so it gets both of these right then one point into betrayal that's the triple bone nova chance so that you know you can you know obviously hit multiple times then one point into flight of femurs for the pierce and the speed and range so that it does disgusting aoe then two points into amalgam of sentinels for travel uh, three points into a natural speed because you want the movement speed so that your golem moves around too uh, fast. Then eventually when you get plus two to golem, plus two to golem on your helm, eventually you want one point here in Tower of Bones or four points in Tower of Bones, then four points into a natural speed once you get plus two to golems. The threat generated will make it so that enemies prefer to attack your bone golem and the size will also make it so that its hitbox is bigger so you can actually use it as more of a meat shield. So that's the reason why we're grabbing Tower of Bones. Now for the next skill that's important is Bone Curse. So we take one point travel into Crippling Anguish. By the way, this will slow your Bone Golem. So if you keep spamming it, you will actually apply three stacks of slow on the Bone Golem. Uh, four points into Cultist Fever for cast speed and man efficiency. So it's just like instant, instant cast. Five points into Merciless. You may cast Bone Curse on your minions, which grants them more melee physical or more physical damage, but also applies Bone Curse's negative effects. What it means by that is when I apply, so it will be applied with all the negative effects and also the actual curse itself. 
So whenever I hit him or anything hits him, he will be applied with Bone Curse, which will trigger more hits from Bone Nova and yada, yada, yada. And of course, like I said, gives you 500% or 50% more damage. Then four points into Spike Bones for Reflect, and then one point into Barbed Construct. This increases the effect on Bone Golem by 200%, meaning whenever I cast this on Bone Golem, he, uh, and send of 50%, I think it's like 150% or 100%. I'm not entirely sure. I just know it's a lot. <laughs> this used to be 300% increased effect. So this used to be all the way up to like 200% more minion physical. But they nerfed it uh, in a recent patch because it was overpowered. But all the buffs recently to minions kind of negates this issue. All right, you're doing way more damage than you were before. Then five nodes into conflation so that we can kind of like just point wherever and we're always hitting our bone goal. Now for the next skill that's important is Dread Shade. So we take three points into Lingering Doom for travel, one point into Pernicious Pact. So instead of the drain Dread Shade does, it just applies a poison instead per second. And if you grab some resistance for your goal, it'll actually resist this poison and make him last longer. And then one node into Egoism. Minion always crits. So this node is very bad for minion builds that scale a bunch of minions. But for a build like mine that only runs one minion, this node is absolutely nuts. Because I don't have to run base crit anywhere. And I don't believe there's base crit that would work for Bone Golem. So this is the only way that we can apply crit. This node makes the entire build work. If it wasn't for this node, this build would be trash. Two points into Spectral Presence. Two points into Grim Fate, it gives us more damage. Now, if now if we have plus two to uh, Dread Shade on our chest, you would grab two more points in this to have another 60% more damage, but we need to stretch for the other points. Three points into Flesh Harvest, you get increased buff effect per 3% missing health, meaning if you're missing like 50% health, you get like 50% more multiplicative buff from all the buffs from Dread Shade, so... The more damage, the more damage here, the more damage here. So as he takes more damage, he will deal more damage. And that'll obviously make it so he leeches more, and then he'll go back to full HP. Then two points travel into Wisdom of the Dead, because this is a very mana neutral build. You don't care about mana at all with this build. Four points into Frenzied Phantom Travel. You don't care about your Bone Golem having Frenzy because you're not actually attack like the Bone Golem's not actually attacking or casting. And then one point into Scorching Brand. So this node is a little uh, deceptive. This gives you haste every second for while Dreadshade is up. That's what it's kind of weird, and it'll ignite your mini each second. But like I said, if you get some resistance, this should not deal your deal damage to your minion at all. Like you'll you'll be fine. Like you'll be fine. You don't have to care about damaging your own minions. But yeah, this will give him haste, which will allow him to have more movement speed, so that he can actually have a better range to go attack enemies. Right? I believe that's how that works. From what I've played, that's how it feels like it works. If he has more movement speed, he has a higher range at which he goes and attacks enemies. And then for Rip Blood, this is the other one. This is very important. We take five points into Hemomancer, three points into Thirst for the minus three mana cost and the cast speed, five points into Quenching for the Blood Orb so that we get a shit ton of HP back when we use Rip Blood, one point into Hematology so we get health restored per intelligence. This build stacks a little bit of intelligence because a Bone Golem gets flat HP and damage per point of intelligence as you can tell here if we go over here he gets like a bunch of health flat health and then a bunch of increased damage so we're stacking intelligence so this gives us a lot of health restored right and then one point into marrow drinker so that it always targets minions instead so we never target enemies we always target our own minions so we're always hitting him no matter where we put our cursor as long as it's in the direction of the minion kind of like in the general vicinity we will always hit the bone golem and it will cause the bone nova very good quality of life there by the way and that's and that's it for 
for blood and then for aod we're running the utility version of aod the most important nodes obviously is four points into uh, one point travel into undertow three points travel into corrosive aura and then one point to decrepify so that we don't take damage from our own poison so we don't have to worry about that we don't have to worry about running poison res then we take four points into absence of life this gives us the heal per second and acts as like a lot of sustain and makes us near immortal and the rest of the points are just travel like are just uh, whatever you want to grab other than this i would tr probably grab chill of the bone always right but all the other nodes are kind of like whatever you don't really care you could grab the poison rest here if you really think that standing in poisons is causing you issues you could run the poison res you get like free poison res cap there's a lot of options that you can do with this but this is i just go for the area so that our chill and slow has a bigger area of effect and that's pretty much it for the skills All right, for masteries and passives here, we take eight points into Forbidden Knowledge for Necrotic Resistance so that we don't have to put much Necrotic Resistance on our gear, and then Intelligence because that scales our Bone Golem, one point travel into Mania of Mortality, then three points into Unnatural Preservation, which gives us a little bit more Necrotic Res, which is important for later, which lets us cap our Necrotic Res later with some other nodes on the tree. Then eight points into Soul and Vitality for increased minion health and vitality. You want to be increasing your own health while also increasing your minions. Very strong node. Then for this, we take eight points into Survival of the Cruel for the flat health because we want as much flat health as possible. Then two points travel into Crippling Insight so that we grab Aura of Decay. In stacking isn't a priority, it's just more of a side thing that we do, right? Now for Necromancer, eight points into Elixir of Hunger for flat health and for the increased cast speed which is pretty good. 10 points into Curse Blood because most of our damage is fire, physical, and necrotic. So this affects all of our minions damage. So it's pretty cool. Uh, one point travel into Blood Armor. Regen doesn't matter for this build because you leech so much with the minion that it doesn't matter. And then eight, seven points travel into Mortal Tether for the increased minion health. Then that gets us all the way up here. We take one point travel into Frantic Summons. Like I said, cast speed doesn't matter on the build. You don't need cast speed. Your Bone Golem does plenty of damage. You don't need cast speed. Uh, eight points into Tyrant. You do reduce your minion's health, but you also increase your health, which is definitely worth it because you want as much HP as possible, like I said. Eight points into Cling to Life for minion resistance, which will apply to the Ignites and the poisons that my Dread Shade applies. And we'll also apply to all other minions damage. So this is pretty much a 16% less damage taken for your Bone Golem. Then 10 points into Moonlight Pyre for flat damage. Flat damage is one of the easiest ways of scaling Bone Nova. So for in, on Bone Golem, because if you did not know, Bone Golem Nova, I believe, starts out with a base damage of 20. I think it's 20. And this will add another 20 on top of that. So this literally doubles your damage already, right? So this is like S tier node for the build. And the minion necrotic damage does get scaled by the mini, uh, the minion necrotic damage here percentage. Then five points into River of Bones. This is for all the leech we ever need ever since our Bone Golem always crits. This leech is absolutely amazing for us absolute s tier then we grab as much points as we can in this node to cap our reses right now i'm capped so uh eight points for me but it depends on what kind of gear you have uh you want to have as little nodes in this as possible because you're just using it to cap your res the increased damage is nice but you don't need it you just need the res like you said so that capping your reses is easier that's it for the neck uh the tree now i do have like 14 points left what i would run is I would go to the Lich Tree. I would take a few more points travel into Crippling Insight and then put the rest of the points into Bed of Souls for more HP because if you survive, your minion survives, right? Your minion doesn't have problems staying alive. You have problems staying alive. And that's why we're trying to stack as much tankiness as possible. And that's it for this uh, passive. Let's get into the gearing, shall we? All right, here we are into the gearing. So for idols, we want healing effectiveness. As much healing effectiveness as possible, you want all the healing effectiveness. And then for suffixes, if you're rich and you have really good idols, you would want healing effectiveness and flat HP. That would be the best in slot. But healing effectiveness 
is a priority because you want as much healing effectiveness as possible. As you can tell, if we go to other stats, I have like almost 600%. You want a lot of healing effectiveness. Now for your helmet, you want an ivory mask with 15 minion adaptive spell damage. Like I said, the base damage of Bone Ghoul Nova is like 20. So this adds 15 on top of that, which is Fizz. And then it gets scaled by the minion Fizz that Bone Curse gives you and all the other damage. So this is an S tier helmet for us. And then instead of that ward potion on potion, ward on potion use, you would rather run plus two to Bone Golem so that you can go to bone golem and add the unnatural speed and the tower of bones i just don't have it right now because i uh i, I gotta move on with the build i gotta move on to different builds now best in slot amulet death rattle 100 percent, 200 percent crit multi literally doubles your damage now is it needed no you could run an amulet with like dodge and res and free up res somewhere else right you could run something like that right you could do something like that, but this is definitely by far the best piece of gear that you could be wearing because it literally doubles your damage if you have a good roll, obviously, right? If you have a good roll, it's amazing. Now for uh, chest, we run intelligence, vitality, increased health, health. Instead of that intelligence, I'd probably run uh, increased minion health or something like that, or plus two to dread shade. That's another one. Plus two to dread shade works so that you can go to dread shade and grab two more points into grim fate, which is a 30% more damage multiplier. So you'd probably want plus two to dread shade if you are rich. Now for weapon, you want a skeletal scepter with increased minion damage as the, pre as the implicit, then cast speed. Uh, th that isn't as important, but the minion spell and the minion physical is very important. It double dips with your minion spell damage and it's absolutely amazing one of your best items because it just gives you so much increased minion damage absolutely amazing you want a t15 of this the other prefix has no use whatsoever so you just want the cast speed the minion spell damage and the minion physical it's what you want t15 of that then for the shield i have healing effectiveness block chance res and hp instead of block chance you could run like minion health it doesn't really matter. I just got a perfect T20 shield. So I'm like, why not use it? And it's got a lot of block. So pretty much 50% of the time, I take 30% less damage. That's completely fine. It's not as reliable as you want, would want it to be, but it's just another layer of defense and it's another slot to put healing effectiveness on. So I'm not gonna argue. Uh, so for uh, obviously you would want this on a dawn shield base though as that would give you more block effectiveness and then as well you want block effectiveness from here the blessing and that would make iron glass shield even stronger if you could get that then an iron glass shield would be better now for rings rings are a little bit of a issue you could run health minion health regen and healing effectiveness uh, i believe this ring has it yeah healing effectiveness health you can run your crit check of ones. You can run res. Your rings are your flex spots. You could run a silver ring. You could run a gold ring. You can run whatever you want to run with the rings. Mainly, you just need the healing effectiveness. That is the most important part. I don't have healing effectiveness on this ring because it was a. I'm trying to cap my res, so we're running this ring instead. For belt, we want dodge, uh, and then health and health. I just threw this on because why not? But you'd want dodge potion, then increase health, and then hybrid health. Uh, you don't want the crit strike avoidance here or the dodge rating. You want that somewhere else. Then for the gloves, you don't need the plus 12 of intelligence. It's just there because I dropped an exalted one while I was playing it in SSF. And then health and health, and then wherever resistance if you need it, uh, the resistance base. You want the crusader gauntlets because it gives you the void res. Then for boots, uh, health, movement speed, health, and health. And then for the relic, this is important. You want the ruined bones because it gives you increased movement speed, healing effectiveness, and then res and res. And then the last prefix, you could run intelligence, cast speed, or minion damage. And that's pretty much it for the gearing. Like I said, it's a little scuffed, but you could very well easily improve it if you just uh, went uh, put a little bit of effort into it, right? Like I said, we're already wave 250 and we're missing healing effectiveness. We're missing healing effectiveness. We're missing a lot of HP. We're missing levels. This could push way farther than I pushed today. I just sadly don't have time for that because I need to keep pumping out videos because of the kind of condition we're in with the current community and all that. So I've been trying to pump out as many videos as possible. With that being said, uh, Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at and enjoy some gameplay.